Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about what you need to know about the pH system in your hair care and skincare products. The first question is what is a pH? pH is a scale to specify the acidity or alkalinity of a aqueous solution by measuring the concentration of the hydrogen ions in a solution. The higher the concentration of the hydrogen ions, the lower the pH is. The lower the concentration of the hydrogen ions, the higher the pH is. That being said, any products that is made with water such as shampoos, body washes, serums, creams, lotions, they will all have to have their pH checked. The pH of a product needs to be compatible with the formulation, the, the skin, the hair, and the preservation system. It's also essential for long-term stability and preservative efficiency. What pH measuring tools can you use? You can use litmus paper, paper pH strips, and a pH meter. Litmus paper is a good choice when you are formulating liquid soaps, but keep in mind that you might not have the accurate pH reading, which is what we will need if you are formulating skin and hair care products. We want to make sure the pH is a accurate reading. Paper pH strips is better than using litmus paper when you are first starting out with um, formulating products. You can find these on the market such as Amazon and or any other formulating websites where they will provide you with um, pH strips. Keep in mind there are two on the market which is one is graduation one and another one is graduation 0.5. You want to make sure that you get the zero graduation 0.5 and that gives you the um, more accurate pH reading. pH meters are the best when you are formulating with your products. It gives you the most accurate um, pH reading. Um, you can literally get one off of Amazon for I believe $14. I'll link some down below if you are wanting to just get you a little pH meter. I'll make sure I link some pH meters down below that is more on the affordable side and some that are more so pricey but um, ha is a great great um, pH meter to use. How to measure your product's pH. Step 1. Take a sample of your product and transfer it into a clean and disinfected beaker. Make more than you might think you need because if you would like to make a 80 gram batch of hair gel but you also have to test the product pH, you should probably make a 90 and or a 100 gram batch meaning you won't have a 80 gram hair gel if you don't have extra made. pH measurement is around one gram to five grams so product isn't wasted. Step two, make a dilution of your sample in distilled water. The product and water ratio is 10%, which is the sample, and 90% distilled water. Stir dilution well before checking your product's pH. Step three, check your product pH if you are using paper strips. Dip it in the di dilution and check the results using the chart your supplier has provided for you. If using a pH meter, dip it into the solution and keep it there till the reading shows. Check your manufacturer's recommendations. Always take a sample and never use the main beaker with all of your products to check your product's pH. When checking your product's pH, please do not use your whole formulation to check the product's pH. Take a little bit of the sample, sample as in one gram and or five grams, um, or just use it. I, I like to use a 10%, so 10% of the um, sample of my product and then, um, what is it? 90% distilled water and um, basically you know check your product pH that way so some products may not need to be diluted such as micellar waters toners body sprays hairsprays things of that nature will don't really need to um, be diluted but if you would like to dilute it anyway you can always have 
10% of your um, product and then 90% distilled water. When formulating, use these two types of waters, distilled water and deionized water for the best pH control. Um, if I butchered that name, I promise you it'd be on the screen. If I butcher anything in this video, <laughs> um, I promise you it'd be on the screen. I'm horrible with pronouncing these words. I don't know why I am, but I am. Please do not use tap water. Um, another water is purified water. Use only those two types of waters. When you are formulating a body butter, you do not have to check the product pH because it does not contain water. Now, if you make a body butter that has water in it, then of course you need to check your product's pH. But you do not have to check your product's pH if it's a anhydrous product due to it being anhydrous slash oil based product. If I am using all of these different types of words that you probably have not heard, please make sure you watch my first video um, about formulating, the Formulating for Beginners series. Um, and that will be down below um, and or up above so you can understand me. But I'm also working on getting a video out with uh, just different pronunciations that we use in the formulating world so you can understand when I use them on camera. pH adjusting for hair and skin. The pH of the skin ranges to 5.0 to 5.5 and the hair's pH ranges from 4.5 to 5.5. Please make sure you keep your product's pH between those ranges. What happens if your product isn't within the pH range? Everyone's skin is reliant on the skin's acid mantle. This acid mantle protects your skin from bacteria, allergens, pollution, while maintaining your skin's moisture. If your skincare products are not in the pH range, it can cause inflammatory, inflammatory, <laughs> inflammatory and um, acne and eczema. So we do not want that, so that's why we want to make sure we check our product's pH. Now for the hair, everyone's hair is substance for the alkaline. And if your hair products isn't within the pH range, it can cause a big disruption to the hair. It can cause a lot of damage, breakage, and leaving the hair dry and brittle. Formula for pH modifiers. You'll need to have 10% of the pH modifier and then 90% of distilled water. pH modifiers to increase the product's pH. This is a pH modifier I use to increase my product's pH, which is sodium bicarbonate. You blend, add one gram of sodium carbonate and nine grams of distilled water. Gentle heating may help the sodium bicarbonate dissolve in the water. Now, when you're seeing me mix this, you'll see the um, sodium bicarbonate kind of sit on the bottom, but if you just heat it for a little bit, you'll be just fine. And or you don't have to heat it, just let it sit in the water for a little bit and it will dissolve. There are other modifiers that can increase your product's pH, which is sodium hydroxide. When using sodium hydroxide, make sure you add the sodium hydroxide to the water and not the other way around because it can cause a chemical reaction which will cause your room or wherever you're at when you're making this um make really strong strong fumes the other ph modifier you can use and i'm going to butcher this so i'll make sure it's on the screen it's lang langernin and basically you can use that in your formulation put it in your water phase and formulate with that um, ingredient. pH modifiers to decrease the product's pH. The one I use to decrease my product pH is citric acid. Make sure you check the description box for where you can get your pH modifiers. Add one gram of citric acid powder to a beaker and then weigh out nine grams of distilled water. Pour the citric acid powder in the 90 gram distilled water and stir it until the powder dissolves. Another pH modifier that decreases the pH is lactic acid. 
Lactic acid it can generally be purchased at 80%. It can also be further diluted with distilled water to make 40%, 25%, and or 10% solutions. How to use pH modifiers. When using a pH modifier to increase and or decrease your product's pH, you only need a few drops. If you put too much in there, if you're going to decrease your product's pH, you're going to have to increase it because you put too much of the solution in there. So you literally need just a little. After adjusting your product's pH, you'll need to stir up um, your product really well and then go over the same step as you did before when checking your product's pH and making sure your product's pH is staying in the range of the skin's pH and or the hair's pH. So if you would like to keep um, your pH modifier in like a container, make sure you're keeping up to date on when you make that solution because um, that solution can only last up to a week. So. So if you're not really formulating like crazy amount of um, formulations, um, I suggest you to just make that solution when you're checking your product's pH. And make sure you use the percentage of what um, I've talked about earlier in the video. You have reached the end of this video. I hope this video has helped you with formulating. Um, if you're new to my channel, I hope that you can stay <laughs> and will stay and subscribe and make sure you turn on your notification bell. Um, make sure you like and also if you guys could just comment anything this helps boost my algorithm and helps my channel get out to more people so i can have more time to upload for you all um i hope this helped now uh we can get into formulating all these amazing products now because i have um helped understand um the formulating process but if you don't understand i trust me you will eventually have a nice day everyone. Bye.